Welcome to Animating the Guts of an SVG Image with Green Sock. In today's lesson, we'll compare vector and bitmap images, look inside the code of an SVG, explore the circle element, do our first animation on its attributes, and also animate it using CSS transforms. We've got a lot to cover, let's get going. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic, and as the name implies, they're great for scaling. This orange here is a PNG image, which is a bitmap. Watch what happens when it scales up. You'll notice that these edges here get all pixelated and blurry because the pixels are actually being stretched and scaled. If we jump over to an SVG version of the orange, watch what happens when it scales. The edges stay smooth and crisp. And if we look at these side by side, you'll see exactly how much better the SVG orange is than the bitmap one. Now it's important to note that vector images contain instructions for drawing shapes, whereas bitmap images need to store the color values of every pixel. And since vectors are storing just instructions for drawing art, you get a very small file size, the artwork is scalable, and this type of imagery is great for logos and crisp line art. On the other hand, bitmaps, since they can store all that individual pixel data, they're best for photographic imagery, where you need a high level of detail and color gradation. And by needing to store all that pixel data, that means that larger photos create larger file sizes. That's my puppy Nala. Isn't she cute? Next, let's take a look at what those vector instructions look like. Here you'll see my beautiful orange, and I'm going to jump into the HTML for this web page. And look, this is the SVG code that makes this orange. Now the first thing that should jump out to you is that this SVG looks a lot like HTML, all right? You may not recognize this G tag or the path tag, but SVG is a markup language just like HTML. You'll see familiar things like an ID, you'll see transforms, and up at the top you're going to notice that there's also styles here. We'll be talking about different ways to use CSS with SVG in the future, but for now, I just want to give a brief overview of the code, okay? And to make this orange, there's a lot of different vector paths, and the different points and anchors of those paths are all displayed here numerically. Now, I don't expect you to read this and know what it means, but the most important takeaway right now is that SVG files contain a lot of numbers, and GSAP loves animating numbers. Now when we animate these numbers with GSAP, I often refer to it as animating the guts of the SVG, all right, or the things inside of it. And the only way GSAP can touch these numbers is if the SVG is added to our HTML in line. And what that means is that the SVG tag and all of its code is added directly to the HTML. And before we get into animating the guts of an SVG, I want to show you two other ways to add an SVG to our document. So I'm going to select all of this SVG code, delete it, and you'll see that our orange disappears. And I'm just going to paste in this image tag that I had handy. And you'll see here that the image has the source attribute set to orange.svg, which is hosted on CodePen, okay? So here, we can use an SVG in an image tag, but we can't access the guts of it with JavaScript, all right? So that's not going to work for us. So let's get rid of this inline SVG. You'll see it disappears. And lastly, we can use an SVG as a background image. So here I have a class of orange using that same SVG image as a background. And in my HTML, what I'm going to do is just create a div with a class of orange, and boom, there you go. We get to render the SVG orange, but we don't have access to the guts. So I just wanted to make it clear that we need to use an inline SVG in order to animate the guts with GSAP. This question comes up a bunch in the Greensock forums, and I just wanted to make sure it was clear before moving into creating our first SVG and animating its guts. So, here we have our first SVG. Isn't it beautiful? Well, actually, it's blank. So, we're going to set up our first SVG using the SVG tag, okay? We have an opening tag and a closing tag, just like you would in HTML. Now, the view box here defines the position and dimensions of the SVG's viewport. This deserves a whole lesson on its own, so I'm not going to get into it right now, but it is important. Next, we have the width and the height. It's 400 by 400. Now, there's absolutely nothing to see here because there's nothing inside our SVG. 
Now just like other HTML tags, SVGs can be styled with CSS. So let me just plop in a little CSS here. Ooh, and there we go. Our SVG has a one pixel solid border and a light gray background. Now it would be great if our SVG had something inside of it. So let's add a circle. I'm gonna do that using a circle tag, which like other HTML tags is self closing. Now I need to give the circle some attributes in order to see it. So I'm gonna start by giving it a radius of 100. You'll see something that looks sort of like a circle shows up right over here. Now the reason why we're only seeing part of it is because the circle's center by default is at the zero zero coordinate in the top left hand corner. So other attributes that I definitely want to use are CX for the center X position and I'll set that to 200 which moves it over to the right 200 pixels and guess how I move it down. See why the center Y is also going to be 200. And now I have a circle that's centered in my SVG. And as I've been saying all along, this circle tag are those instructions about how to draw a circle. And what I can do here is I can change the radius from 100 to 300, which will make my circle so big it covers the entire SVG. But by making that change from 100 to 300, I haven't increased the file size at all. These instructions are still very small because the SVG is just all the different kilobytes needed for this text content here. So I can have a circle that has a radius of 30 pixels or 300,000 and it's really not going to impact the file size. Let's go back to a circle of 100 and now we have what I've been wanting all along, an SVG that has some guts that are ready to animate. So for our very first animation, we're going to animate the R attribute of this circle tag. I wanna go ahead and make sure that we have GSAP loaded. So I'm just gonna type in GSAP here select it that's going to pull it in as a resource and in my pen behavior settings what I'm going to do is turn off the auto updating preview because as I'm typing JavaScript I don't need this refreshing all the time so this is going to give us our friendly run button up here so the first tween I'm going to write I'm gonna do gsap.2 the target is gonna be that circle element and in order to animate the attribute I need to tap into the built-in attribute plugin. To keep my code neat, I'm just going to go down to another line here. And the attribute plugin takes its own object of properties and values. So I'm going to tween the R value to 250. Let's give this a run. And there you go. We just animated that R attribute. If we do an inspection on this, there you go. You'll see the R got animated to 250. And we can, of course, animate additional properties. I could also do the CX and move it off screen maybe to 600. This animation is a little bit quick. Let me just pull this up a bit. And outside of the attribute object, I'm gonna add a duration of three. So now when we run, we'll have a much slower animation. Ah, very nice. So now that I've shown you that GSAP can be used to animate these numbers or guts that are inside the SVG. I want to make it clear that we are not restricted to just animating these attributes. What we can do is also use normal transforms. So I want to show you I could do something like let's move it to an X of 300 and maybe we'll do a scale of 0.5 to make it smaller. And we could even do something like an opacity tween 2 to make it fade out. So let me give this a run. Ooh, and there we go. And that was really cool. But if you pay attention, you're gonna notice a subtle difference in this scaling animation in that it scales to the top left-hand corner. Let me get rid of that X tween there and I'll run one more time and that'll be staying in place. And you'll see that the transform origin of this circle is the top left-hand corner. When I animated the radius, it had grown from the center. 
And as we get into this course, we're gonna be focusing more on using transforms, setting the transform origin, the SVG origin. We're gonna talk about all the different ways to stylize these SVG elements using CSS and various presentation values. We only dealt with a very simple black circle today. We're gonna to be talking about setting fill colors, stroke colors, animating strokes, creating loads of different shapes, and of course, animating them. But we've covered a lot of ground today, and we'll have plenty of time in the coming weeks to get really deep into all these subjects. I hope you enjoyed this first lesson. See you next week. Do you want to gain mastery of the Greensock animation platform through more videos like this? I'll show you all the tips and tricks I've learned over a decade of using GSAP, working at Greensock, and teaching it to thousands of developers like you. My training is guaranteed to save you hours of frustration as you learn to add ultra slick animations to all your web projects. From UI animations to text effects to just plain silly stuff, creativecodingclub.com has you covered. Join today to get early access to my groundbreaking SVG Animation with Greensock course, plus over 180 GSAP lessons, and get new lessons weekly. Visit creativecodingclub.com for more details.